doing? Getting better, man. Same thing every day. Same thing every day. So guys that are wrestling tomorrow, come in, get what they need. It's more probably really mental than anything, stay in their routine. Obviously, got to get some weight off sweat. And the other guys, man, get better. Really working on beating high thigh. It's a really problem position. Um, so we're spending some time in there. One, how we can teach it better, too. Uh, we're kind of having them focusing on key points, uh, using leg on extended, getting the guy to his hip, and then turning hip down, almost like part their defense. Beating that position with them focusing on regular leg ride defensive bunch and then hip position on the feet. So you see those three areas kind of key focus for a lot of the guys that aren't competing tomorrow, spend time in. So this time of year, you guys are in your interconference dual season. Training wise, do, do things change from week to week, or from from kind of that individual competition season into your into your dual conference season? Not a whole lot, really. I mean, Doug will start tapering some, but mainly it goes by feeling the room and what guys need. It's pretty consistent, man. It really doesn't matter what time of year it is. Obviously, if you got a competition close, you'll pull back a little bit, but. And when we go, we go pretty hard. It's just kind of the way he does it. So it's not a whole lot different whether it's April or June or right now, right before adult. Big test this week. Consistent. Big test this weekend. You're moving out of West Gym and, and, and going go to a bigger arena. Um, obviously, that don't matter. Doug actually talked about that at the beginning of practice, and actually, a, a guest speaker today talked about that as well. Like. What, what what gets you excited obviously to get these guys to compete against that team like but but like taking away like Sunday sitting down after the duel and, and kind of taking away from it uh, what, what, are, what are some kind of key benchmarks you're looking for the next couple days um, a really consistency uh, probably the times I've seen guys perform the worst is when they make it something extra and occasionally you see a guy not get up enough right like they sleep past the dude or a man somebody catches up with them or a guy they don't know. And most of the time it's when guys get too amped up. So I really look for consistency. Um, guys not changing just because it's Oklahoma State, you don't change anything compared to wrestling Missouri, right? You don't wrestle the singlet, it's just another time to go compete with somebody else. So benchmark for me is I'm watching guys right now, I'm watching guys before the duel, and then once it's time to go out and scrap, man, like there's a lot of that that's out of your control. So for me, my focus this year has been Take my own advice and enjoy it. The competition time, the seven minutes that they're wrestling another guy, I try not to miss it. I've missed too many matches in career and like I coached to do for Lujan for about 11 years now and he's probably gonna keep wrestling after he's done but things start to change, right? And I start to think how many times I'm gonna be sitting in that guy's corner. I've missed too many of those experiences in the past, just make it in another day. And man, really just going out and trying to enjoy it. I mean, these guys go get to compete at this level and the work they put in. Win or lose, man, I love wrestling, so I gotta love it all. I know if we lose, I'll learn from it. If we win, man, that's awesome. But I've been, uh, I've been around you for a minute. Yeah. And it's a pretty similar dynamic with me. I've calmed down a little bit, but you're always back behind the athletes during the duel, relaxing, Doug's tap dancing, standing on his head. Like, how do you not get wow? I, I look, I watch every duel and I look in the background and just wait for 30 seconds for you to just jump out of your skin and you don't. How does that happen? Well, I can't. I'm not good at it. And I've lost, my, like, I've lost my cool before. I Man, I do it all the time. Um, for you, had to stop me one time. I was going after official after Hodges State Finals match. I was literally on the floor and you had to grab me. And you're like, where are you going? I can't do that, man. If I'm going to do a good job coaching, I just, man, I can't control my emotion. Like, yeah, me personally. Like, I've got to be calm. And, and it's probably a misconception of what people see on the outside is what's going on the inside. Man, when that stuff comes out, it just comes out too much. It's just too much pressure. So i got to bottle it up and keep it in and find other ways to get it out later. But how to handle all that inner stuff, my dad demanded of my brother and I growing up. Um, discipline of emotion and self and what you're saying and the way you're acting. Just raised that you're always in control of it, man. So... Man, I just don't, I don't coach well emotionally. It's an observation I've made through my coaching career that I have to be calm to know what's going on. I mean, you see Doug, what's going on. He literally knows if one second's off on riding time. If I get that emotional, I don't even know what day it is. I don't know if the building's on fire. I have no way. idea what's yeah, going on. So he tells me out the window. For me to do a good job, I gotta be calm. And why I'm able to do that is because of my dad, the way I was raised.